So who are you? Uh, so I'm Chris. I'm uh, one of the co-founders of Smugbug, and that guy over there is the CEO and Chief Gatekeeper. Hey, How's how going? are you? <laughs> and uh, we hired Anton Lorimer, who I think is so talented. Beyond just sharing them online, to tell our story of Smugbug. Because it's our passion and our life and our legacy. Look at that. How do we deliver our clients' perspective of the world? How do we do it? So he's the using a 5D Mark II just like I am. He's using a 5D Mark II to film the How whole thing. How do we give them what they need? See the shallow depth of field? Those he's are the using questions we've been asking ourselves since the beginning. This is an 85 millimeter F1 II. That, that drive our business, that so drive our product. So Don's nose is in focus, but then... And his eyes are in focus. Well, does it and then the ears are out of focus. See how shallow the depth of field is? Show yeah. the it's world just how awesome amazing. their stuff is. Photography in and, and of uh, itself represents Turn that down. So he... <laughs> the dogs go <laughs> nuts! <laughs> so, uh, can we see this on the internet? Uh, soon, we're still... Uh, we're still, still finishing it, so this is a preview version. <laughs> no one's seen yet. Half of the company hasn't seen it. <laughs> this, yeah. this just came in yesterday. And there's a lot of great things about where this is the head of Bay Photo. One of the so one of the things that he, uh, I lent him my 200 millimeter f2 lens yeah. while we were up in the San Francisco do, doing the skyline thing. And he said, "Oh, you shouldn't give that to me." And he's a pro photographer. He says, "Because if I ever use it, I'll never be able to go back." And then he put it on his camera. He said, "Oh, you're ruining me. Everything looks it's, better with this lens. Everything looks so good." So I when we get to this portion, really uh, a group of photo geeks. Smugbug's a group of photo geeks. Just sharing them online. When we get to the portion where we're in San Francisco again, and you see the 200 millimeter f2, and how it changes. It really helps more. One problem with audio oh, people. Watch this. Because we are. Oh man! <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Listen to all of our customers. What you say actually. What a beautiful video. Yeah. This is one of the best vi wedding photographers in the world. Yeah. Videographers in the world. Right? He, he's absolutely the best. People adore him. They and if I think if the rest of the industry, if wider industry knew about him, you know, for promotions for other companies, <laughs> it's not again. It's not in our interest to say this, but he uh, he would be so busy because. It's the best promo I've ever seen. So beautifully filmed and story told. And he picks up some of the other things, like the cooking you were just leeching off of. Yeah. The go karts you haven't ridden yet. No. He ran behind the go kart. All the face painting. But you guys bought those because we of got the go karts. Because <laughs> oh yeah, because of you. <laughs> We owe I you didn't for know that. they existed until he tweeted. Are those cool? They're so we're, cool. We're, we're going to ship some of those to, to Rackspace. Nice. And the, the only problem is they knocked down one of our doors. Somebody clipped the door in a high-speed <laughs> high race. It's more than the company. So, um, I'm very grateful to be part of Anyway. Wow. What a beautiful video. What did, what did you learn by watching him work? You know, um, turn that down a little bit more. One guy, one guy with good camera skills can do better because he shoots and he edits yeah. and he thinks up the whole story it's there's no wall you know where there's one guy shooting and he's trying to figure out how you edit the guy knows how to edit he knows how to shoot yeah. he just I mean he's near genius you should see his other films he hosts them on Smugmuck I can send you a link so I don't know how to shoot because that's why I use a 17 millimeter like I'm using yeah. <laughs> and mine's a little jiggly and a little bit soft focus his, right? his were smooth even when he was walking behind the go-kart yeah, and see, he's, see I, my hands aren't that smooth and he's and he's got the shallow depth of field lens and he somehow keeps it in focus and he's just he, you know the Do, guy. does he use something on his viewfinder in the back like yeah, he loop? does. Yeah. So what he does is he uses a shoulder brace yeah. to hold the camera, and then he uses this loop on the back. So he's focusing with one hand. The camera's well braced yeah. and against his shoulder, and then he can move around and shoot and everything. All that stuff that he shot in San Francisco that was smooth was with a 200 millimeter handheld. Whoa. The rest of us couldn't do that. No, it, but but it was that I shoulder. I drink too much coffee for that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that shoulder brace that he uses and everything is just is just that, so great. What kind of microphones did he use? Because the audio sounded great too. You know, the audio did sound good, and I was surprised by that because he used a lavalier. Yeah. It was a wired lavalier, uh -huh. uh, and I don't really like the sounds of lavaliers. I'm used to sound guys with a microphone above, and you've got your microphone really close, and yeah. 
It's not a lavalier, so you get good sound. No, that's one um, reason I use a 17 millimeter, so I can yeah. stay really close. I'm only yeah. about a foot from your face, which a lot of people at home, it, you can't tell that. Yeah, but, so... Um, what, it's really important to stay close so you get good audio. So most people don't realize that audio falls off as the distance squared. Yep. So if the microphone is two feet away from somebody, it has four times intensity of whether it's four feet away. Yep. And it doesn't pick up all the echoes in the walls and all of that kind of stuff. So there would be a dramatic difference now if I move back. No, with no, this. I, even if you move like here, that's two yeah. feet away, right? And then it's probably starting echoing and everything else. Yeah. So I've doubled the distance, but I've cut the sound quality in like a fourth. Also, I'm louder, so. which makes makes the thing worse. Yeah. Wow, what a great video. Thank so you. When, when, when are we going to see this in public? Uh, so we're touching up our logo a little bit, our pro logo. Okay. We're trying to make it look really cool. Right. And as soon as we're done with that, then you'll see it in public. You can, can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Gonna, well, we're, we're taking well, it to we're the next level. We're revising that logo, so okay. this is going to be a collector's item. Awesome. We're yeah, collectors. We're taking it to the next level. I, it's half on. <laughs> My strap. I just turned on the camera right here. Uh, what else has been going on at Smug Mike? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you ask him? He's... Oh, oh man. The yeah. lighting in here sucks. you got to get better <laughs> light. <laughs> when you look up, it looks very good. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the thing we're really excited about is we, uh, you know, we've been so focused on... Let me turn okay. that backwards. There we go. So, uh, gangsta. Gangsta style. Going, going sideways. <laughs> we just... <laughs> we, uh, um, we've been, you know, we've been doing this for more than eight years now, and we've been so focused on the, on the product and the feature set and everything. We have rarely spent any time on marketing or brand positioning or anything like that, and yeah. we finally feel like the, like the product is almost at 1.0 quality. It's strange to say after eight or nine years, but uh, we're feeling like it's finally getting there. So we're thinking more about how to polish it up and sort of get it ship ready, if you will, and market it to people and actually like, you know, try to sell the thing uh, instead of letting our customers just sell it for us. Yeah. Um, so a lot of our effort... Uh, but that works too, you know. It, it works great. I mean, it's people in the built airport, because our... I, I have a smug mug strap and uh, people see it and they just love your service. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, that's been the fuel for our business. Something like 60 to 80 percent of our signups are from customer referrals. So I don't want to disparage it at all, but we haven't exactly been helping them. Um, our old homepage, for example, tended to, we devoted most of the pixels to telling our existing customers what was new at SmugMug instead of telling interested people like what SmugMug does. Yeah. We didn't even mention the word photo sharing on the homepage. You like, you'd have to guess that we were somehow photography related and we did photo sharing. So we just finally, for the first time in a long, long time, overhauled our homepage with an eye towards, well, what if you've never heard of Smug Mug, like most of the world, billions and billions of people? Yeah. You've never heard of Smug Mug, so you go there, let's tell them what they do and make it look good and make it obvious why we're so different. So uh, we've been doing that and, and uh, we have a whole lot of other stuff sort of in that vein of polishing and and uh, sort of um, yeah. you know, making you, the thing better. Do you watch, so Facebook now is the number one photo sharing site, right? They, yeah. They, they do more photo sharing than any, any of you guys combined, right? Any of the other competitors? Yeah, I think Zuck said over the weekend like five or six times all the rest of us combined, and that's that's a big number. Do you do you look at that and get jealous, or uh, or do you think? Oh you, no, you not at all. Else? Uh, you know, I think I think our value proposition is very different from Facebook's, and I think the two products are very complementary. Um, so one of the things that we just did last week, in fact, I think it was last week, maybe two weeks ago, is we put Facebook like buttons on every photo on SmugMug, um, and there's a I'm I think we may be the only big like internet player I can think of that has a Facebook like button right on our homepage. So our new homepage has one front and center. We want people to see how into our product our customers are. Um, but SmugMug does a lot of things Facebook doesn't do and probably never will do. Our photos are huge and ginormous. Um, they uh, we have we devote every pixel to showing off the photos. We let you customize your background, and the default is black, which makes photos pop, and all kinds of things that Facebook isn't geared towards. But Facebook does a lot of things we aren't geared towards, like keeping your friends up to date with you know what photos you've taken and where you've taken them, and all that sort of stuff. So we view Facebook as a major opportunity for us to help our customers share their photos with their social networks on Facebook, yeah. um, but still display them in the way that they would rather display them. 
Now, uh, you guys charge for a, a good chunk of your service, right? Because you have uh, there are no free accounts. No free yeah. accounts. So you get you get a fourteen day free trial, which is great. That's usually enough to get the needle in the arm, and you'll keep coming back. Um, but all of our customers are paying customers. Awesome. And how's that going for you? Uh, business is booming. Uh, and you never took venture capital. Nope, we are uh, we're totally bootstrapped, and we've been profitable since just after our first year. Um, and, I, and every time I go back and come back here, there's more employees and more, more photos employees. on the walls. I don't know if yeah. you can see the photos on the walls here, but beautiful photography. We're all. running out of wall space. We're getting more office space, so we can put more photos up. <laughs> Maybe we'll put warm bodies in there too. Um, what about mobile? Because uh, the, the oh, iPhone now is mobile's huge. Has for a us. good. What are you doing there? Um, so we have a Smug Mug app on the iPhone um, and uh, and a separate one on the iPad. Um, we'll probably blend the two together um, here in the fairly near future. Um, we originally sort of thought that uh, the the iPad app would just be great for iPads, and it is. It's fabulous. It's the best way to browse photos uh, I can think of on the iPad. But it turns out that that UI will also be great on the iPhone, so I'm anxious to have it in the photo taking app. So we have SmugShot, which takes photos, and SmugMug, which browses photos. And it's dumb of us not to just combine those. Um, but we think we think mobile is huge. Um, our Android app is almost done. Um, we could probably show it to you if you Ooh. wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that. the big issue with Android is that all the devices all have their own quirks. It's really, really difficult to get it right across a Galaxy S and a Droid X and an Incredible and all these other things, it's so much easier on the iPhone. But we yeah. love Android and we, we recognize lots of our customers use it, so we're, we're working on it, getting it right. Um, but uh, we think mobile is huge and yeah. there are a few things I, I just can't talk about, but okay. you'll see them later this year that we think are enormous. Well, it, it's interesting because I'm using the iPhone for photography again because the camera is so much better than the yeah. 3GS. But I'm using things like auto stitch to stitch together panoramic. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not a pro panoramic guy. Like <laughs> you should see his photos. His multi gigapixel photos yeah. are just awesome. Yeah. Tell me what you do with your iPhone. Do you shoot much on your iPhone? Or are oh you yeah, completely my F5D it, Mark II it's guy? it's bizarre. I never would have predicted this, but I shoot mostly uh, photos and videos with my iPhone, my iPhone four. Yeah. Um, and the main reason is because when I do shoot on something like a 5D or whatever, I want to find the time to edit it in Lightroom before I upload it anywhere which means they just go to die on my hard disk for a long yeah. time because I just don't have much time. It's ironic. I run a photo sharing company, so I have less time for photos than I did before yeah. <laughs> running a photo sharing company. But with the iPhone, it's just so convenient to quickly snap off a video clip of my kids doing something crazy or a photo somewhere. And I know that it'll already be geotagged and it'll just upload instantly and I don't have to think about it. It's so yeah. friction free. And finally, the pixels are high enough quality too that I'm not agonizing too much over it yeah. so it's the convenience really is won me out i'm i'm have you used the new uh, iMovie on the iphone to do a yeah video we editing? have uh, is that cool it's really really cool yeah the amount of uh not just video but photo editing capabilities we have on on the phone is pretty stupendous there's so much cpu and gpu available that we can do neat stuff yeah and smug mug takes video too we do, yeah. We all the way up to 1080p, so um, you know, way more than than the iPhone uh, generates. But we we love 720 videos from the iPhone too. Oh, separately, this is a Sam gave me to me. So this is Sam's order. Who are you introducing us to, and why does he have so such clever. cool colors? <laughs> so this is our new designer. He's the Russian assassin, Vilen. That's right. Vilen, and uh, camouflage and everything else on, <laughs> and he's got this light show that he's rigged up in his office and we know not to come in here if he's pissed because it's red but if it's green yeah then it's okay blue and so on that is the coolest thing <laughs> <laughs> how much do these lights cost you um i think around 200 200 do, bucks do, do you still have a strip out or are they all hooked up i want to show them how they so there are these 3M LED light strips and they have plugs on either end so you can just chain as many of them together as you want and then they're programmable they're really really Awesome. And see, cool. see how his hat's glowing? Well, the camera sort of picks that up. Sort of picks it and up. We can get it. Yeah, it's fluorescing because maybe. of the, the UV lights it's coming down. Up. There you go. And he's got this crazy lamp. It's funny, as my camera gains up, it sees less of the, <laughs> the glowing. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is cool. Let's change the lights some more. <laughs> yeah, so, and the reason that we hired him is because 
design has become so crucial to us because our value proposition is your photos look better here. Yeah. So we got to not just talk the talk, we got to walk the walk serious. And there's the new design that you worked on? Yeah, new homepage screen. design. People are raving about that. And that is what the galleries are going to look like pretty soon. Um, we already gave the secret away on our homepage, and so now everybody's asking about it. Oh, when do we get that new design? Yeah. Really cool stuff. Well, nice to meet you. Just the dregs. So, so, okay, so here's, the, some of the here's the story behind this. We, we have. <laughs> Should we start it over again? <laughs> no, that's good. So, we, I, I fell in love with this castle and just thought it was the coolest, just a really creepy, cool Scottish castle. So, we contacted the photographer and said, hey, we'd like to blow this up really big, bigger than we're blowing it up here. But I'm seeing artifacts when you get too close, so I can't blow it up any bigger because we have a bunch of pixel peepers who come by here. And Emmanuel, if you could, you know, shoot it with four frames uh, with a higher res camera, that'd be awesome. And then we'd print it really big. So he went back and he said, yeah, well, you know how photography is. I didn't get the penetrating light. The seaweed wasn't red. They had scaffolding over here. The tide was out. I just, I couldn't quite do it. So, but I went further on the island, the Isle of Skye, and I got this one. What do you think of that? And I looked at it and just could not believe it. I loved it because of God's rays coming through here and the vibrant colors and everything about it. And he said, I, I shot it in three frames, one, two, three, and then I stitched it together and got all this resolution. So I quickly went and put it behind a light box so it would glow like it does on a computer monitor. And he, in the meantime, entered the UK's most prestigious photographic contest with it. And um, uh, that was sponsored by the BBC and the Natural Museum of uh, history, I think, yep. and he won and was named Landscape Photographer of the Year. And then I wrote him back and said, Emmanuel, the only thing is I think there was an error in the stitching. I meant to point this out to you, but there's three frames here and the third one slopes off, the water slopes off to the right. So I think there was a, photo there was a Photoshop stitching problem there, <laughs> and, but no one ever noticed and he won. And so now I think this th is available in like the Natural Museum of History in London. Wow. It's become quite a famous photo. So. Wow. It's a good thing the tide was out. Now, we, on previous trips, we've seen uh, your San Francisco room, yeah. right? where you have uh, San Francisco all over, yeah. right? Have you seen the other side from San Francisco? It's the one that people like the most. Um, from Twin Peaks? No. Okay, I'll show you that. I'm going to go barge in and accompany me. Sliders for the offset and the... Um, hey, sorry to interrupt, but we, we got a film in here for a second with Robert Scoble. Well, they said right uh, me. Hey, uh, hi, so Robert Scoble, it's worth it. He's a good guy. Uh, he came by to leech lunch and also to leech uh, camera straps. <laughs> there's such a waiting list for camera straps, he knew what he was doing. We have like 54 people on the phone here because we have a lot of remote people. But anyway, so I got well, to show... Companies here and we're wasting their time, so we're going to get out of here. <laughs> See, that, that, sh that shot was shot with an 800 millimeter lens from Twin Peaks. Peaks. It's like a gigapixel shot. You could walk right up to it and see if that guy's w wearing underwear in the yep. in the building there. It's kind of a voyeuristic thing to do. It's a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit creepy. <laughs> Thanks, smug muggers. Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, they left. <laughs> You guys are crazy. <laughs> so this just got hung a couple of days ago, so we still need to work on the lighting, but All right. this is not a photograph. What do you mean? That? Isn't that shot with my new 24 millimeter lens? So that is a 400 megapixel uh, render from id Software's upcoming game, Rage. Whoa. So it's 25,000 by 16,000. Pixels. Okay. Um, and I have some history there because I used to, I did, I handled the internet release of Quake um, and used to know those guys really well. They're old friends of mine uh, and the game looks amazing. It looks super hot. Uh, some of my friends are designing it and stuff. And so as soon as we, they posted these huge ones, uh, huge high resolution versions online, we sort of looked at each other and said, well, we know what to do with high resolution photos. We put them on the wall at Smug Mug. So. Yep. So uh, there That's we awesome. have it. Yeah, it's, I, it's awesome. If I want to do one of these for my house, how much, how much does something this size cost to print out? You know, the uh, place to go, I think that was about $350. That's and I, it? I, yeah, and I did a mounting on it. There's a plastic cincher on the back that makes it hard. Okay. And, and you can also put a polycarbonate over the front so you can scratch it, hit it with chairs, your kid can, you know, whatever you want to do. It's printed at a printer in San Francisco by the name of DPI-SF. Yeah. Um, and they have a... a uh, light jet printer, which is a great, it's not an inkjet, photographic process and all that. 
and it's 120 inches by 72 inches, one piece of paper. Wow. And that's what that is. Wow. It's about 120. That's beautiful. Isn't that something? Now, now, if I took one image on my 5D at, let's say, 200 ISO, so pretty low ISO, and I did it on a tripod and I made it really, really sharp, how big could I print that? I think out? you could print it that big. I've printed other shots nearly that big. Okay. Um, but, but most of the images here are, are multi uh, stitched together. Yeah, most of them are multi. That's this, medium format. I think. This is six centimeter by seven centimeter film, and okay. it was scanned for that one. But we've printed them pretty big. You know, it's 21 megapixels, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, and but the the main thing is the sharpness of the lens, the f-stop, how steady the mount is, the good light, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, cool. What you had one last one to show me, or was, no, was it? This was it. Yeah. What? Well, thanks. We're gonna have one over here. One more. <laughs> one more. Oh yeah, let's see trays. That's new since you were here last too. Yeah, I haven't seen this one yet. You know Trey Ratcliffe? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's one of Trey's shots. Yeah, awesome. so Trey's an awesome photographer and very famous. Yeah, and stop it down a little bit so you can see his color. We just love the shot. Now he does you one better than the 5D Mark II. He shot this with a Nikon D3X. Yep which is 24 megapixel and clean as a whistle. It's so one be. shot, this is not a multi-stitch This is one shot, and I believe this is 60 inches by 40 inches high. Um, but it is HDR. It's right? HDR. So it's, it's HDR, and I... Multi exposure, one shot. Multi-exposure. Well, he, so, yeah. he, he, he right? might have, he he might have done this... Or is he doing this in RAW? You know, I think he's done this one in RAW. Um, I think he did this as one exposure, and the reason I think so is the leaves would have moved. Oh, okay. yeah, so of course. So if you have movement with HDR, you do one frame and then make a few copies, go up and down. So, uh, Trey, if you're watching this, I hope I didn't misspeak. Correct us in the comments if I did. <laughs> By the way, so, I, you guys have the user groups all over the world now, right? We do, yeah. We've rolled out almost... 50 now. And do people sp speak on these kinds of topics, they how do. to make these great yeah. photos? We call them SMUGS, which is short for Smug Mug User Group Meetings. Yep. And, uh, you know, here in the Bay Area, we have three of them. We have one in Walnut Creek, one in San Francisco, one in Silicon Valley. And they get, you know, usually 100, 150 people per, and we invite high profile photographers to come tell their stories and so on. And they talk about lenses, and they talk about selling your photography, and all kinds of things. The Orange County one's probably the biggest; it's 250 people. Yeah. But we we've just opened ones. We just had one in Miami. Um, we have a whole page of where they are, and they're just these wonderful volunteers who organize them. And then we give them some money for the venue and food and stuff like that. We give away camera straps there, so you don't have to come in here and get them and things. <laughs> <laughs> they're nice straps too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, thanks so Great. much for uh, spending a, an hour with me. Oh, it's thank really, you. Uh, I, I tell people if they come to Silicon Valley, they have to come to your oh, headquarters. Good. But I know uh, you can't have you know 100,000 people come through here. So I, We have people stop by all the time. We love it. That's one of the reasons we put the photos up. It's not just for us and our employees, but we love having visitors come but by. I noticed so. the front door was locked. so <laughs> <laughs> I had to talk my way in here. <laughs> There's a there's a doorbell screening process. But we let most people in. Yeah, we. Have, I'm gonna try the mother of all shoots here pretty soon. I did this blog post on the stairwell, and the Golden Gate Bridge thing. Did you yeah. hear about that? No. So the story. <laughs> <laughs> so the story is our stairwell is kind of barren, but it has these huge walls, 150 inches Let's go high. Up there, Sam. Okay. Finish, finish up there. So. Uh, yeah. So this we, is another one. We we've done a previous video on this photo. 144 inches high, but if you walk right up to it and put on your spectacles, you can't see any pixels. It's just a detailed. Yeah, I mean, and this yeah. is the only place in the world you can see this cathedral in all its glory with all the statues and everything I mean, else. Look at the detail. Okay. It's unbelievable. I, I just went as close as my lens could go, and now you can get a sense. How many images was this? Uh, you know, it's about 12 across by eight or nine rows high. With a Canon 5D Mark II? Yeah, so it's almost 100 images. And you were using a 300 f2.8 lens? I was set at f8 because it's sharpest at f8. Yeah. Um, a very good mount uh, and the whole thing. Canon, you know, so. Canon should give you one of those new 300 f2.8s that just came out the other day. Are you listening to this, Canon? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I've tried begging for my I'll own, make, my own sake, it, but I, 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 you actually you proud. use it for something <laughs> worthwhile, you know? I'll make you proud. So. Okay, so one embarrassing part of our building is this, this dark hallway, and you'll notice the walls are quite tall. If you were to come look at this wall here, all the way from the stairway down there to the roof is 200 inches, and that back wall is 150 inches, 
And we could do something that takes up every inch of the wall and wraps all the way around it, but we just couldn't think of what it was. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, an underwater shot in the Great Barrier Reef with all the colorful fishes. But the problem is they move between each frame, so how do you stitch them together? Well, maybe the NASA Space Center with the Saturn rockets or something, you know, the Smithsonian Institution, what would it be? And you want to take something, to, to make it big, you want to be able to see detail like you saw in that cathedral. Yeah. Not just take redwood trees and make them bigger or mountains and make them bigger. You want people to go up and be fascinated with the detail they can't see in a smaller print. So what should it be? So it was right when the iPad came out, I did a blog post called An iPad for an Idea. You give us an idea for what goes here because we're stumped. We give you an iPad. And I got 412 comments or something like that and then my eyes bled trying to read them all and respond. and. They were good ideas, but nothing really blew us away. Um, so I got discouraged, and true story, the very last comment, the last one that had just come in, the guy said, well, the most iconic photo place on Earth is the Golden Gate Bridge, mm -hmm. but we've all seen it so many times taken from the same angles, you know? Yeah. And we've never seen it from the angle that really matters, and you have the place to show that off. And what is the angle that really matters? It would be from the top of the North Tower. Oh. Up on top. <laughs> it makes you weak in the knees just to think about it. And if you could imagine, you're at the right, you're standing here with this perspective at the top of the North Tower of the Golden Gate Bridge, and here are the cables going down that way. Oh. And San Francisco is off here. Have you shot this the, yet? No. And the cliffs are off there. Have you gotten permission yet? No, but I've gotten tentative indication that I can get permission. I have to pay, pass a safety inspection where I show that nothing can fall off me and go to the cars below. Yeah. Um, so, God, I'd love to shoot you shooting that. <laughs> well, so, I, I think we should do that. I think we should do that because three people can go up. I'd even mm. edit that video, okay? <laughs> <laughs> three people can go up, and so I'm talking about going up in a helicopter and going over the tower beforehand a couple of times to pick the lenses oh, and everything yeah. to make sure, because I think it's one try. And that's why I haven't wanted to do it during the summer because I, I, the, there's better clarity in the wintertime with the atmosphere well, being cooler. Canon just came out with a new 8 millimeter zoom, right? Yeah, yeah. So 8 to 15. 8 to 15 yeah. you know, that maybe, Canon, come yeah. on, hello! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if that would be too wide or not. We'd, we're going to have to go up there and take a look. You and I will have to go up in the helicopter a couple of times. Oh, that, that'd be great. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll drop you note and we'll do that. And, and we could make a really interesting video from the helicopter too. In fact, one of those... You'll run a steady cam? Well, or? it's more than a steady cam. It's those gyro stabilized yeah. things that you use in helicopters. And we'll use our 5Ds and get some really now, good footage. Now, how are you going to make an image that big from uh, the top of the, of the Golden Gate Bridge? Because it shakes up there. It's not a steady place, and it's windy. Yeah. yeah, so wind is going to be a real problem. I had that problem with the San Francisco skyline because I was up on Twin Peaks yeah. with an 800 millimeter lens. So this will be a little wider lens. I have a very, very steady mount. Yeah, um, but the bridge itself is moving. Because yeah. I've been, I mean, if you walk across the Golden Gate Bridge, it shakes. Yeah. Especially and I'm up on sure that it tower. shakes all the way up at the top, right? Yeah, so that's going to call for a you know, decently high shutter speed, which would call for enough light that you can get it decent high shutter speed it's going to be one of the big challenges that's why we have to go up in a helicopter a couple of times and test and hopefully it out. it's not uh, foggy the day you decide to do well this. So that, that, that's another reason for not doing it right now because yeah. it, the summertime fog if if i got up i'd shoot myself if i did all this preparation got up there and all you could see was gray and then yeah. i just put up this gray photo and said believe me i was on the north tower and that wouldn't work so I'm thinking wintertime when the atmosphere is clear uh, and get the golden hours it where... It would be really cool though if the fog was hitting the deck and yeah, so you would see down into this fog down on the deck. Yeah, I was thinking it would be great if, if it was a little foggy. I love driving across the bridge when it's not so foggy you can't see anything but stuff is just sort of disappearing in the distance either above or you know on the other side of the bridge and getting some of that in there would be amazing. Well, cool. would be amazing, but I, I'd have to have a season's pass to go up to the North Tower <laughs> to get the right time. So, uh, well, we'll work on that. Thanks so, so much, guys. Yeah, it's been really, thanks. Uh, it's always yeah. a thrill to come through here and talk to you guys. And come by anytime. Thanks, and I'll steal your food anytime. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it sure is.